Here's Eliana. I know another South African. Here we go. South hey, Africa is in the house. I just have to say, I actually counted the hours so that the South Africans don't have to wake up at four in the morning for this Aww, one. That's so nice of you. Yeah. Thank you. It's my peeps. I know. I had to do it. Okay, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Yes, very excited. Yes. Me too. So um, first of all, I let me share my screen. There you go. So I want to just start by um, just acknowledging Kirby and Fiona for allowing me to um, share this with you guys. I don't take it lightly. Um, I, I'm actually very honored that they would allow me to share what I know yeah. and what I love. So our expression is exactly what Kirby's talking about at this moment. So um, yes. So what I want to aim at, okay, let me just say this as well. I am not a PowerPoint girl. I discovered that while I was trying to do this, but I know that some people actually learn better when they see stuff. So um, bear with me, okay? I'm more on the, let's just do this thing. Okay, so I want to, just for con the content, we're gonna speak a little bit about what is anointing, how the anointing oils were used in rituals and ordinations. Then we'll look at the Hebrew word for oil, and then also the science of oil. Um, and then we'll look right at the end, we'll do a little bit of the meanings of the 14 principal oils mentioned in scripture. But during the next couple of weeks, what I'll do is I'll post short little snippets onto our mentorship group, explaining a little bit deeper on the oils. Because if I had to go through all the oils today, guys, um, you guys are not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> you will definitely. Um, I just want to quickly make this smaller because it's in my way. But Okay. Oh, there I do it again. I just want to move this screen because there we go. Okay. So the power of smell. Odors have a power of persuasion stronger than that of words, appearance, emotions, or will. The persuasive power of an odor cannot be fended off. It enters us like a breath into our lungs. It fills us up, imbues us totally. There is no remedy for it. So when we work with oils, I always say it's something that God gave us that's very tangible for us to use in this realm, um, affecting us both in the spiritual as well as in the natural realm. So that's where we're going to um, attract this thing of anointing oils. Okay, so my scripture that I go to in the message Bible says, but they are no match for what is embedded deeply within you, Christ's anointing, no less. You don't need any of their so-called teachings because Christ's anointing teaches you the truth on everything you need to know about yourself and him. It's uncontaminated by a single lie. Live deeply in what you were taught. Isn't that just amazing how they place that scripture? So. Um, the interesting thing about today, what I want to release to you guys is some knowledge where you can actually end up with your own creative flow in, in mixing oils, in using the oils, and um, just experimenting with, with the different oils in scripture. So the word holy anointing, shemen ha meshach, uh, means holy uh, oil of anointing and this was formed as a very integral part in the ordination of the priesthood um, and the high priest as well as consecrating the articles of the temple the primary purpose of anointing with holy anointing oil was to sanctify a person an object to make it holy to set it apart for the purposes of God 
extra biblical resources show that it was common to anoint a king in many of these ancient Near Eastern monarchies. So the oil was not only to set objects or people apart, but it was actually a social political um, message that came through anointing both kings and priests. So um, the act of anointing, the term anoint, uh, mashah, means to rub in. So what they would do is they would rub these shields with this anointing oil. And that word, when they started rubbing the shields, it meant to make war. And the interesting thing is they actually used the oil for their shields as well to keep it supple. So that if the, the skin on the shield would not go hard because it will break easily. So even with us, when we use the anointing oils, we have to flow in them. It creates the suppleness within us where we can just move in the anointing as it's needed. So something um, that I want to just say at this point. So Kirby uses olive oil. And I also know... Um, Joseph Prince, he uses olive oil and they pray over the oil. And then that's the olive oil that they would use. And that's perfectly fine. And for me, with what we're going to discuss today is all of these other um, elements in the scripture that the Lord gave us. There's so many plant species, so many different oils. Um, infusions, like they would use the olive oil and they would infuse it with spices and they would infuse it with fragrances. So um, I asked the Lord, why is it that one person can use olive oil and it will work, but yet in scripture, it speaks about all these other oils. And I really felt like the Lord was saying that he trusts us enough to know which oil to use at what time because the oils represent specific things because they have specific meanings it's trusting who we are and in our own trust so he trusts us sometimes he trusts us more than what we sometimes trust ourselves so by giving us all these different oils it allows us to say, I want to flow in this thing today. I want to move in this thing. I want to have faith for this specific thing. So they would um, anoint the high priest and the sacred vessels. There's a lot of scripture on here. Um, so you guys can write, I, I don't know. You'll watch the recording if you want to go through each one of them. But there's really a lot of scripture in here. So they also anointed the prophets. So let's look at the rituals. So some of the rituals that they used was to anoint the body and the hair and the head. They used um, it in atonement. They used it for peace, for thanksgiving offerings. They used the oil um, to as a symbol of honor and favor and joy. Um, so oil was also withheld. So at certain times, the oil was seen as so sacred. It wasn't just another oil it was literally a symbol that they used to um, mean something but for some reason the lord actually withheld it from things like sorrow disgrace disfavor um mourning they would withhold all of this because of the power that it carried so it was also withheld from je jealousy and sin offerings um, let me say this real quick. The reason why is because oil is also used, you guys will hear as we go on, oil was used as a binding agent, okay? So when, for example, with me as an artist, in order for them to bind pigment together, they would use oil. So just using that concept, we don't want to bind ourselves to disgrace, sorrow, favor, mourning. So that's one of the reasons why it was withheld as well. And also sin and jealousy, right? So the oil was also used for burning in the lamps, um, for medicinal purposes, and anointing the dead, okay? It was one of the most valuable products in the country. They would trade with oil. It was as 
powerful and as valued as silver and gold. Um, Solomon actually traded with oil for a steady supply of cedar and cypress for the temple. So it was seen as money, right? It's a trading thing. And even in the spirit, when we start anointing or if we start using the oil, it's a trading in the spirit. We use it as um, uh, money. So, okay, in the purification ritual of a person who has recovered from leprosy and oils, this was really interesting. You guys would have heard me talk to Rose about this uh, in our little video that we had, okay? I'm going through this really quickly because the best part is yet to come, okay? <laughs> so um, they would, with the lepers, that's interesting is they would have to have a sacred offering. Once they were healed, they would have the sacred offering on the eighth day. And later on, I'll explain to you guys why the number eight is so important, which interesting, we're on the 18th today, which is an eight, right? 18 has a different meaning, but it's also on the eighth. So they had to take this oil um, as in this oil for the lepers was the most oil that was in a quantity wise in a sacrifice or in a ritual was for the lepers and they would have to um, on the wounds that they had they had to mix the oil with blood so that represented their redemption it re it represented them coming out of this place of death into life again and you'll see on, on here, I said that they had to do this on the eighth day, but the number seven kept on coming back as well. They had to sprinkle it seven times before the Lord. So don't forget those two numbers. I'm going to bring them back in, okay? So when the priests would anoint, here's something interesting. They would anoint the right ear for what we hear, the right thumb for what we do, and the big toe on the right foot for where we walk. So they would even anoint the sick, sick people like that. And interesting about the priests, they were also the healers at that time. So when they would anoint people, they would sing over them. And the frequency of the song and the frequency of the oil is what through them would heal the people. So I don't know how many of you guys are musicians, but actually a lot of the times when we are singing, um, it's not as effective at, as what it was with the priests because they added an extra octave, which changed the frequency of our sound in music. So you'll actually hear a lot of people who are doing worship now, they actually put their worship and their sounds through this um, machine measuring. I don't know, I'm not like all into the music stuff, but the frequency of their sound would actually go through that and change it so that it's back into the frequency God originally created. So it's the same with the priest. So therefore, you guys are priests, right? We're royal priesthood. So when we anoint someone, when we start singing, okay, we have more power. There's a higher frequency on our sound. <laughs> Welcome. So um, there's a higher frequency on our sound when we release. That's one of the reasons why Kirby says that we need to start writing poetry, the rhythm of the poetry when we pray. That's one of the reasons because a song also works in that same rhythm. So when we anoint, if we come into what we speak, what we sing, how we prophesy, how we um, have our uh, poems, read our poems, there's something different that's released. And also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's a lot of poetry coming out right now. A lot of people are writing poems. So there's really something about this in this time season that people are awakening to. Okay, so the anointing was bestowed on kings and priests. Okay, interesting about this is that when they anointed the kings, they would anoint them with Ruach Yahweh, the spirit of the Lord. 
So the unction of anointing a king was then absorbed as they were anointed. It was absorbed as divine attributes. So it meant that it was um, Yahweh's support, Yahweh's strength, Yahweh's wisdom. All of these attributes were divinely imparted into the king. And what's interesting is with a high priest, there was not this... Um, divine connection attributes given into this unction with the priesthood it was merely to set them apart it was to um it was to set them apart it was to sanctify them for the divine purpose and authority to enter the spiritual realm so they were placed in, the ritual for the priesthood was to enter into a different realm Whereas with a kingship, it was to rule and reign on the earth. So if we go back to scripture again, we are both priesthood and kings as the Lord anoints us. So we have, we'll talk about this again later on, but it's the up, up, down, down that Kirby's talking about, right? As priests set apart, the function was, to, the, was placed upon us to move in the realms, and then as kings, we are anointed by the spirit of the Lord to affect natural realm. Okay, so um, the, the sons of the priests were anointed with their father. Okay, the, according to the priestly source, the sons of Aaron were anointed alongside him. However, the difference between the, the anointings was that Aaron... When he was anointed, we read it, right? The oil literally dripped off of him. He was drenched. He was immersed in the oil. After that, the sons were not immersed in the same way. The Jewish people believe that once it is done one time, then it will be that for every person afterwards, right? How many of you guys, just a show of hands, were truly immersed in the oil with Kirby? How many of you? I saw, right? We were so immersed at the um, union, at the ordination. Um, I remember we were a group of friends and um, we were all together and everyone was complaining, I can't get the oil out of my hair. I can't get the oil out of my hair. <laughs> and they were like drenched from it. But the interesting thing about that, it's even that concept of being immersed in oil and struggling to get the oil off has a significant purpose because oil also, anointing also represents fat. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. This is my part. I love this. Okay, the Hebrew word for oil. There is 1,015 direct and indirect references to oils in the Bible. We find oils, we find perfumes, we find incense, and 33 plant species according to scripture. That to me says that there's importance when it comes to these things. God doesn't just do something, there's purpose behind it. And 1,015 direct and indirect references references i would say yes that's important okay so the oil the hebrew word for oil here we get oh so excited is shemen okay the root word shemen means oil okay um it's used around 170 times in variety of contexts in scripture and the root word for it the numerical value is 400, okay? And 400 is the numerical value of the Tav, the Aleph Tav, right? In the Hebrew um, alphabet, the Tav represents um, the beginning and the end, right? And Christ is saying um, that he is our anointing from the beginning to the end. Okay, and now the cardinal number is eight, right? And it is, this, the eight is the numerical value for the word oil. It also means new beginning, infinity, 
resurrection. So the number for oil, the numerical value for oil is a eight. Come on, it's so cool, right? Jesus was raised on the eighth day. Pentecost occurred seven weeks later, the 50th, 15th day, which is the eighth day. Jesus prophesied on the eighth day in the tabernacles, um, the outpouring of the spirit, eight. The numerical value for God's name, Yahweh, is 26. Two plus six is eight. Come on. Isn't that awesome? This like freaked me out when I saw this because I asked the Lord, okay, we're working with all of these essential oils, right? That has prophetic meaning. And what do we do with olive oil? Like there's not like a um, great significance, I thought, to it. But then when I started doing the research, it's saying that the I am, the very breath that created us with his intention, created us with this eight. We become the eight. We become the anointing. We become the flow of the oil, right? We, it, it, I'm pretty sure all of you guys have heard, you have to go through the pressing in order for the oil to come out, right? We've all heard that. <laughs> We've all experienced that. But it's so significant because... It's not, okay, let me take this further. Seven is for the perfect natural realm, right? We all know that, I, most of you probably know, that the number seven is for completion and for covenant. So out of the completed work of the cross, we move in this realm of seven, right? So the very first time, look how far it goes. The very first time oil was mentioned in scripture, Exodus 27 verse 20 says that, um, I'm not going to read it in Hebrew because I'm going to like really mess that up. But it says, command the people of Israel to supply you with the purest of olive oil. Do this so the lamp will keep burning. Now, the interesting thing about this scripture is that there's exactly 15 words in that sentence. And the word shemen, right there, if you guys can see it, right there, is the eighth word in that sentence. Whether you count it from the front to the middle, from the back to the middle, it remains an eight. If you count the word shemen zayit zach, which means pure olive oil, it still remains an eight. There's now three words attached to it, but it doesn't change the numerical value that this word stays supernatural, that the oil functions supernaturally. Okay, here's our word fat. Shemen, which is oil, also means fat. And fat means to be covered, right? We all know that that fatty substance, if you mess it, it's a big issue to get that fat off, right? So in Job 29 verse 6, it says, when my steps through rich pastures were washed with butter and cream from my livestock and the rock poured out for me streams of oil out of the rock, out of Christ, out of the foundation of our rock flows the oil. Now, in Deuteronomy 32.15, it says Israel was criticized um, for being fat, thick, and covered. Okay, now, guys, that scripture was not to mean you guys are fantastic. It was actually criticizing them for being fat, thick, and covered, right? But we have balance. So we're going to pull that criticism into the glory and we're going to reveal the truth okay fat means including into in sorry that's the wrong word it means indulging into the pleasures of the mysteries of God's word that's what it means to be covered in this fattiness of the Lord it's a gateway for us the mysteries of God and thick means indulging in good deeds right and covered is the revelation given to the world 
of the secrets and the of the secrets previously covered. Okay, so let me take this back. Up, up, down, down. When I heard Kirby talk about this, the oil made even more sense to me, right? Fat, indulging in the mysteries of God. Where do we find the mysteries of God, right? It's not just in his word, but where we sit with him, when he downloads things to us, when he pours into us, it's a spiritual connection. This fattiness of his mysteries is a um, connection spirit to spirit. And out of that, that's our down, down, the thickness of the pleasures that we bring into this realm, releasing mysteries that were previously hidden now for this generation. Isn't that how we all feel? We want to release the goodness of what we received and what we walk in and just give it to the world around us. We all have that desire. Okay, so the Hebrew word for oil, here it is, up, up, down, down. First up, we move into the supernatural realm, then down into the natural realm, the perfection of the earth, the perfection of the cross. So interesting, a lot of people came to me and say, said, Tanya, I want an oil for my husband because my husband really struggles with this and this and this and this, and I just want to give him an oil. What would you suggest? And I would say, well, any oil would work depending on what the circumstances are. But let's say you decide to take the oil of the Lion of Judah, right? Now, the important thing is who touches the oil first? We do. The people anointing the other person or even just handing the oil over to a person, we touch it first. Therefore, we should walk in righteousness and balance if we operate in the anointing. Because remember, I said it's a binding thing. We bind. So God's going to work with your heart first. God will work with your heart first when you work with the oils. And then only when you hand it over, it will be balanced. So as out of the motive of our heart, we start anointing people out of the intention of our hearts. We start placing anointing. It's the same way we use communion. We activate our faith when we start taking communion. And with the oils, it's exactly the same. It's activating your faith. There's no magic in the oils. You are the magic. You are the power. It's, act, it's taking a step out and saying, through this anointing, through this resemblance, through this intention, I'm stepping out of the realm, the up, up into this realm to manifest something that I want to see happening. Okay. Science of oil. Dr. Bruce Tanio from the Tanio Technology in Washington developed equipment to measure the frequencies of humans and food. Oils have the highest frequency on the earth. Okay, megahertz. Canned food, zero. Canned food does nothing for our bodies. There's no frequency in it. So when you eat it, number one, I don't think it tastes that good. And number two, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't bring healing to the body. It doesn't bring anything to the body. Um, death, death starts, well, let me say this, illness starts at 52 megahertz. When we start, a human body has between 62 and 72 megahertz. When we are healthy, it ranges between 62 and 78 megahertz. And when illness starts, it, our bodies drop and it goes to about 52 megahertz. Um, death starts at 24 megahertz if i can remember correctly okay so when we use the oils right essential oils rose oil pure rose oil has the highest frequency 320 megahertz so let me tell you guys a story something that happened <clears throat> when i was still in south africa and i was working with these oils um i had a student she was very young um she wasn't even 40 years old and she was diagnosed with stomach cancer. 
And um, I asked her, she was, she believed in Christ. Um, she went to church, but she didn't have that relationship with him. And um, I asked her if I could wash her feet and give her communion and anoint her with oil. And I chose rose oil because of the frequency. And once I gave her this oil and I anointed her, she came back multiple times. And she said, I don't know what it is about this oil, but I feel better every time I use it. And here's the, here's the kicker about that, guys. It wasn't pure rose oil because rose oil is beyond expensive to buy. And most companies actually sell rose oil as a combination of different oils or a diluted version of oil. But when I prayed over the oil before I gave it to her, something happened in her as she was using the oil. And she kept coming back, kept coming back. She didn't understand what she was experiencing. She didn't understand what she was feeling, but she knew she was feeling something. And she's not the only person that that happened to. I um, gave rose oil to a guy that had cancer as well. And he came back and said exactly the same thing. So through the intention of my heart for them to really meet God, Every time they use the oil, that's what manifested in their lives. And that's what, what changed for her um, was the something that was given to her that's so tangible and it affected who she was as a person. So there's definitely something about this oil. So Bruce Tanya did this um, measurement where he took coffee two people, a 24-year-old and a 26-year-old, measured their body at 66 megahertz each. Every individual held a cup of coffee. I'm a coffee drinker. They held this cup of coffee and their bodies megahertz immediately within three seconds dropped to 58 megahertz. They didn't, even, they didn't drink it. The one guy didn't even drink it. He just held the cup of coffee and his body's frequencies dropped. And they anointed him with this oil. And within 21 seconds, his body's frequency was back at normal. The other guy, they did not use any of the oil. It took three days for his body to come back to its original frequency, 66. So a lot of the times people can feel an immediate change when we pray for them with these oils because their body's frequency raised. So let me explain this in like really easy terms about this frequency thing. When there is a one frequency, and you guys will know this probably, let's say there is this frequency at this level and then there's a glass and this crystal glass, you guys know this if you haven't seen it, there's this crystal glass and it vibrates at a frequency. Then you have this opera singer that when she sings, her vibrational frequency coming off her voice is higher than this of the glass. The glass now has a um, choice. It can either move and vibrate at the same level as the frequency of the singer, or it cannot contain the frequency of her voice and that's why it shatters. So the same with oil, the high frequency that comes off our prayer and our anointing is much higher than any other lower frequency. So with our intention, once we place that over the lower frequency, it has a choice to either come up or break up. And that's pretty much what we do with this oil. And that's why people can feel better once we pray for them and anoint them, whether you do it in the spirit in your temple, for those of you guys who do that, or if you do it physically, the, it's a release to them. So the surprising study showed when we change our thought patterns and when we meditate, we can actually lift the body's frequency by 15 megahertz, higher than what it originally is. So... That's one of the reasons why it's so important for us to actually use some of the oils. If you're struggling with meditation, the oil can help you because it raises the frequency. So, um, yes, 
I'll leave it at that. Here is important. One drop of a pro one drop of essential oil approximately has 40 million trillion molecules. We only have a hundred trillion cells in our bodies. So one drop of oil contains molecules enough to cover your body with 40,000 new molecules. Just one drop. Considering that it is, it only takes one molecule of the right kind to operate a receptor site and communicate with the DNA to alter its um, cellular function. What this means is in oil, we have, if you guys see how I spelled it, if you can't understand the word, just remember PMS, <laughs> okay? <laughs> There's phenols, monoterpenes, and sesquaterpenes in these oils. So we can literally change our DNA through prayer and anointing. What these things do in the cell, the one comes into the DNA and it cleanses the cell. The other one penetrates the cell and it removes everything on the inside of the cell, cleansing it. And the third one enters the cells and rewrites and reprogram DNA in that moment. So when we speak the truth and we release the truth through the anointing, we can literally change someone's DNA in that moment. I think that's fantastic. Anointing oils, oils for that matter, is the only thing that can also penetrate our blood not the only thing, but it's one of the only things that can penetrate our blood brain barrier. So when we smell something, or when we use the smell of our oils, it goes directly to the amygdala and the hippocampus, and it bypasses our rational brain. It bypasses the, the part in our brain that we want to think and rationalize and act from that place. So the oils have just smelling the oils you can actually have that forty thousand molecules covered within your dna you don't even have to touch it it's airborne oh i like that it's airborne all right so just in a quick summary for you guys right oils are used for binding oils are used to transfer authority and power from the divine Oils are used to consecrate and to set apart. Oils are used to purify and to heal. And oils are used up, up, down, down from the realm of the eight into the realm of the seven, the, this realm that we function in. With prayer, frequency, intention, we can shift the oil. I just want to see here. I wrote some stuff down. Um, all right, this is really important. One of the things that we have to understand is that with the oils, why did God, why didn't God just tell the priesthood that they could use just an ordinary olive oil? Why was it infused with all these other oils? Why was there a mixture of it? Well, for one, think about all the slaughtering that took place in the temple. And that means there were probably insects, flies, um, illness, all kinds of things. So most of the oils that, that were used, they have either antiviral, antifungal um, purification. The oils were used to clean out um, anything that could have caused sickness because it was also a place of healing, right? So that's very important. Um, okay, I think that was about it. So um, another story I want to tell you guys real quick. Talking about the um, frequency of the oils and the sesquaterpenes and the monoterpenes and the phenols that's in the oil. Cedarwood oil, for example, has the highest sesquaterpenes. And what that is, um, it's oxygen-bearing molecules. So the reason why I tell you guys, I want to tell you the story that happened. We um, had art class and one of my students said her husband was diagnosed with um, C 
sleep apnea. And as easy or as simple as it is for me, I was like, well, oxygen bearing molecules can't breathe at night. Let's just try it. And I gave her one of my anointing oils that had cedarwood in it. And she came back the follow. Oh, the oil was actually called Grace Upon Grace. And uh, I released the oil to her and she came back the following day and she said he did not. He, it was the best time that he, he did not snore. He breathed throughout the night. And for me, it was just, well, I'm not going to say this big prayer and now heal him, Lord. And it was just through intention that we released the oil and it worked. Well, is there healing property in that oil? Sure, there is. But your intention amplifies it. And that's how we use these oils. Okay, so let me give you guys some of the oils, the 14 oils in scripture. Okay, I'm going to go through it quickly. Over the next couple of weeks, I will release small little videos online, um, just going a little bit deeper into each one um, and just giving you guys more information. If I had to do all of that today, then um, you guys will be here for seven hours. Okay, so calamus anointing oil is the word kna. It means to create or to redeem as Jesus is our redeemer. So when we use calamus, we anoint someone for redemption. So we, we place that upon them. The kasha means to bow your head. Um, and it is to humble yourself. So kasha, you guys will see in the next slide, there's cinnamon. Kasha and cinnamon is from the same family but they're not exactly the same. Um, the picture that I have here next to it, that's what kosher looks like. So if you guys go to Walmart or to Checkers for those in South Africa, you're probably going to see this. That's kosher. That's not cinnamon. Um, they smell similar. They taste similar. But consuming too much of the cashier can be poisonous for us. So if you guys want pure cinnamon, you need to search out Ceylon cinnamon from the Ceylon trees. But anyway, cashew was also in the holy anointing oil. And as well as cinnamon was also in the holy anointing oil. So both of them were used. And this means humbleness where cinnamon here at the bottom means to be upright and it's for holiness. So as we humble ourselves, we walk in the holiness of Christ. Cedar anointing oil is the Hebrew word arras, and it means to be firm or to be strong. Um, and cedar wood is really good for people who struggle with depression, can't sleep, those kind of things, not just because of, sorry, not just because of, um, the properties in the oil but also because it means strength so standing up from under your circumstances what you're going through coriander coriander was likened to manna and manna represents the word so it's an anointing for the word of god and the revelation of the word of god um when kirby released that teaching I can't remember which one it was but he specifically spoke about manna and how we how the Israelites could create whatever they wanted to create out of manna and that's what we anoint ourselves with when we use coriander is to use the word of God to recreate to co-create to speak life into situations Cyprus Cyprus was used to construct the ark and the ark was created as a vehicle to um, deliver God's people. And that's Cy Cyprus re represents divine deliverance. Cyprus oil is also very interesting because everything that is in excess, you can use Cyprus oil for. So everything that is too much, if you're struggling with trauma, if you're struggling with um, in the natural, if you're struggling with um, too much blood that like you bleed too much or you sweat too much, Cypress oil is good for that. 
And then the one we all know, frankincense, the go-to oil for most people when they talk about anointing oils, and it means to make white. It's, a, it's purity and intercession. So let me tell you guys about frankincense as well. Frankincense was used within the oil with the priests um, to actually help them see in the spirit. It activates your pineal gland. It works well with the pineal gland. It detoxifies your pineal gland. And let me tell you guys a crazy story about frankincense. I do crazy stuff sometimes. <laughs> And it's just the grace of the Lord that helps me through my crazy crazies. We had, just before I came to America, I had a shofar and I was giving it to a friend because I couldn't bring it over here. And I said, well, this is now your shofar and you're going to anoint it. So whatever you release, whatever you speak over it, you're going to anoint it. And it was around October. So it was with Rosh Hashanah. It was a new season. Um, we were stepping into new things. And we were testing the oil and the frequencies at that stage. We were just playing around with it and trying to experience different things with it. And we had this frequency that we were playing in the background that's specifically for your pineal gland. And then we had frankincense oil. And I said to her, wait, wait, wait. I want you to um, pour your frankincense oil down the shofar and I'm going to lie underneath it. And as it comes through, I'm going to drink this oil as a sound that comes through the shofar into this anointing. And she's pouring this oil into, into the shofar and I'm lying underneath. And I'm like, nothing's happening. There's no oil coming. And I'm like, just pour it, just pour it. And she kept on pouring and pouring. And the next minute, we did not take in consideration that the shofar was really a long shofar. And it would take time for it to go down. So we ended up pouring a whole bottle of frankincense down. And by the time it hit my mouth, I couldn't drink fast enough. And I had a whole bottle of frankincense, it was probably about like 10 mold, down my throat. Now, guys, that could be dangerous <laughs> because the frequency is so high. But I had the most incredible vision after that. <laughs> I was open. <laughs> so, um, yes just experiencing and um, trying to play around with these frequencies it works it definitely does work so don't drink a whole bottle of frankincense and make sure it's pure frankincense if you do it but it is actually dangerous for you especially for your kidneys because of the vibration of it then henna anointing oil henna represents the blood of christ because of its color um, the hebrew word kofer means to cover or to make atonement um, used for dyeing, it has a red color. Um, there's a specific river in um, uh, in Israel that also, if the sun hits this river and you look at it, it actually glimmers red. And a lot of henna grows around that area. So that's what henna represents. And then hyssop, hyssop means the application of the blood. So I use henna oil and hyssop oil together most most of the time but your tongue becomes the hyssop your tongue is the application of the blood so when we use this anointing to anoint ourselves we declare that we become the hyssop anointing that we use the blood that we speak the blood that we release the blood um, hyssop was used um a branch of hyssop was dipped, you guys know, was dipped in the blood and it applied onto the door. Hyssop was also used to give Jesus the myrrh and the wine when he was on the cross. So um, hyssop is a great story about hyssop. Um, I anointed my classroom at one stage because there was a young lady in there and she was doing things that she shouldn't be doing. 
And um, I asked, I asked the Lord, I said, I want her to come in because she would listen to worship music in there. And um, some people believe, I write today, some people believe that hyssop actually repels evil spirits. That's what is being said. Even in the Jewish tradition, they would say that's what hyssop would represent. And I anointed my door and I said, I really want her to come in as I minister to her and worship. And that day after I anointed the classroom, she put her foot on the doorstep and she said, I cannot come in here today. And she left. She never came back, which was sad to me. But uh, with our intention, it, again, to me, it's nothing about the oil. It had to do with my intention and how I used it. Galbanum means endurance and intercession. It means to be fat. There we go again. Galbanum means to be fat in the richest and choice part or the finest. We, we are fat in the divine finest of the Lord through intercession. Now, galbanum is really interesting, guys, because galbanum, ooh, galbanum is used in perfumes as an enhancer oil. Okay, so if you use galbanum, it says endurance and intercession. If you use galbanum with your anointing oil, it will actually work as an enhancer, not just in fragrance, but also in frequency, it enhances the oils that it's mixed with. So that's really cool. Okay, and then we have myrrh, also a very favorite one for most people. And I don't think people realize when they anoint themselves with myrrh, what they are actually saying. Here it is. Myrrh is about sacrificing the flesh. So when you anoint yourself with myrrh, it represents the flesh. Jesus died in body, better on the cross. It was crucifying the flesh, but it's very valuable. Ruth, Ruth anointed herself for six months with myrrh. And if you think about that story, is that she literally died to herself to become the queen for the king, to set her people free. She, she died to her comforts. She died to what she knew. She would even die to her religion, her faith, her, what she believed in. Um, she would even die to that in order for this to take place in God and um, not in her own comfort. So when you, when you anoint with myrrh, make sure that you're ready to let that, that flesh die. <laughs> Right, it's a veil. Let's go through. Okay, spike knot. Spike knot is also one of my favorites. Um, that's the heart of Mary. It reflects the anointing before the crucifixion. It's extravagant worship. When Mary anointed Jesus' feet, she um, went in a place where there were just men. So again, she laid down to worship her king. Annika. Anika is shekelet, I hope I pronounce it, or shekel. It means to roar as a lion. It's an anointing for intercession and warfare. Interesting about these little shells, that's what they are here next to it. That's what they make Anika from. These shells were actually used to dye the veil in the temple. They give off, off a purple color and the, um, they would use this then to create the royalty, the pure um, color for the veil. Okay, and then Rose of Sharon, the rose means um, beauty and abundance. This is actual rose oil that I use for Rose of Sharon. Um, but on the next page, uh, I don't know if I put it in. Okay, I probably didn't. Okay, so Rose of Sharon, this one is specifically mentioning roses, which is then beauty and abundance. There's another one called Rock Rose or the Crocus over here. They actually say that the Rock Rose was the actual Rose of Sharon because it actually grows on a rock as well. Jesus as our cornerstone, our rock. So that's the Rock Rose. But I use actual rose one for beauty and abundance. Then sandalwood is for everyone who's creative. 
it's a worship of creativity, singers, dancers, artists. Um, the temple was built with um, sandalwood trees um, and it's our place of worship, right? As we can express ourselves, as we create, that's our place of worship unto the Lord. And then styrex is to mean it's pure speech so that whatever we say, we speak with a pure heart um, as it falls from our heart. This is one of the oils that I used in, I think it's one of the oils, we'll check. Okay, so I want to show you guys how I use my oils, how I come to it. So my oil, a lot of people, well, some people write, some people sing, some people can do poetry. I'm not really good with words. So oil, I use oil as my story. I use oil to create a story. I use oil to speak my poem, if, if you will. So I put this one on here because I know that a lot of you guys are working with this. Um, I use spike nod at the bottom as a pure act unto God as we worship him. He, that's our foundation, our worship foundation um, as the fear of the Lord leads to wisdom. And then calamus means to redeem um, and it's a redemption thing and redemption is on the earth, right? Where we create on the earth. And the earth works with knowledge. And that's why I moved Calamus as redemption in this realm um, for knowledge as we create. Sandalwood is also a worship and creativity, right? And that's where we use from our spirit, yielding to God's power, yielding to a worship act, connecting to our spirit. We worship him in spirit and in truth. So our creativity flows from the place of sandalwood, from the place of worship. Um, cedar is our heart. That's the place that we connect our breath to. It's the heart and the lungs. The breath brings balance into the through the counsel of God. Um, and it also brings oxygen. So cedar wood has the highest oxygen level, um, oxygen bearing molecules. So connecting that to our heart areas where our oxygen flows from in the council of the Lord. Agar wood, I didn't mention this one earlier, but it's one of my favorites. Agar wood represents maturity and obedience. This oil is linked to the maturity of Christ. Um, we can either speak from an understanding of his maturity and truth, or we speak from our own perceptions. We anoint with agar wood as an act of faith that we step into the understanding of Christ's mind and speak with clarity and truth from the mind of Christ. Frankincense, that's wisdom. I used it here also because it connects with the pineal gland, right? Wisdom. So it means purity. And this is closely connected to prayer. Um, your pineal gland works with light. So for you guys that don't know, the pineal gland also releases melatonin and serotonin. So when we sleep, um, it, it goes dark and that's when the serotonin, but when the light, when the sun hits your eyelids, your pineal gland actually wakes up and it's part of light. So even in the physical realm, it manifests through the oils in that way. And then the Rose of Sharon, to walk the path of the Spirit of the Lord is to be enlightened. It's full of abundance and beauty. That's Adonai as we move from that. Okay, so this is what I do. As you guys can see, going back real quick, I just write up all these little short pieces, um, what each one of the oils mean and represent. And then I take out keywords. And I start writing this little story, um, feel grounded, it's our foundation, the fear of the Lord leads to wisdom, worshiping creative center, the one true just God creating new, oh, sorry, creating new realities on the earth through the order of knowledge, yielding my will to the process of Yahweh's power, bringing balance and counsel, maturity and obedience, speaking with understanding, reality of truth, pure light seeing from the unseen realm of wisdom to releasing to the seen realm 
The rose of Sharon to walk in the path of the spirit of the Lord is to be enlightened. It's full of the abundance and beauty. So I write this little thing and then I take it a little bit further. And then I create a little poem. Just quickly, I create this poem. And then you ask your sister, who's really good with poetry, to help you create a bigger poem. <laughs> And then this is the end of it. And this becomes my prayer as I anoint myself with this oil. Walking the spirit path full of light as my foundation, enlightened with abundance of grace and beauty. Pure contemplation illuminates imparted wisdom from unseen to seen realities. Dancing the creative walls, becoming one with the mind of Christ. Whispering the language of understanding like rivers of fire flowing down, maturing my heart in counsel, known to spirit, unknown to the thoughts of man. With a breath that brings life, I yield to the flow of power that brings balance and to creation. To, in the order of knowledge, my creative center yielded to its own design, the union of spirit, soul, and body. In awe and wonder, I ground my reference posturing in extravagant worship so when i anoint with the seven spirits this is my prayer and this is how i move through my anointing so my anointing becomes a story and that is it we can ask questions if i can just get my screen oh my gosh that was amazing tanya amazing Thank you. So beautiful. So if you guys have questions, I think that's part of the reason why um, I wanted to do the Zoom because then you guys can actually ask questions. Go for it, Jen. Oh, hi. Thank you so much, Tanya, for this beautiful, beautiful, as you said, worship to the Lord presentation. I was so taken by it and I just love and how you linked with the uh, Hebrew and um, as I, some of you know, I, I just love Hebrew and it, um, I'm so into Gematria. I was wondering if you could, could you go back to the slide where you mentioned about the oil, um, the Hebrew root oil, yeah. uh, uh, word with a with a shaman, and it's a shin mem nun. Yeah. And you were talking about how you add up the gematria, and um, this is what I came up. So I was wondering uh, if I did the math wrong because you said eight, and I I love your connection with the um, eight because it's uh, you when you uh, go ordinal number shmini is actually it has a shin mem noon, just like oil. <laughs> yes. And, um, but so uh, root uh, letter is a shin mem noon. Is that correct? I, yes. Let me double check. I I think you're right. I, if yeah. you can go back to the slide, um, they can all see. Yes. The here's the slide. Right. So shin is a three hundred. Mem is 400, I mean 40, noon is 50, adding up to, I put it on the chat, it's uh, 390, right? So that you add up to three plus nine is 12, yeah, the end number is a three. And um, did, did you say that was an eight? Because I, did I get that wrong? So How did you get to so eight, number eight? Shemin, I will have to, I wrote this really short in here. So let me double check on my notes because I did count it all up in a different note. And then I can send that to you. Will that work? Sure. Yes. Um, I, I just, well, so I, as you, um, I'm looking at it, you have Tav there. Yes. Tav and Aleph. Yeah, Tav and Aleph, Tav meaning the end. So the, the 400 ended up being the Tav. That's the numerical value of Tav. Right. 
Yes. Oh, that's how you picked 400 because I okay. thought you were adding up to Shaman the no. root word. No. Okay. So at the end, it's the Tav. He's the Aleph Tav, meaning the 400 is then connected to, he is our beginning and our end. As we anoint, he is eternal from that perspective. So even in the script, in the Hebrew um, alphabet, the anointing comes through as he is like the scripture that I mentioned right in the beginning, that um, everything we need is found in him. So therefore, he is the Aleph of the beginning and the end of our anointing and walking in the anointing. Right. Yeah. And L Aleph Tav adding it will be 400. One, which is five again. But anyway, um, also wanted to add that eighth letter, uh, is a hat, which is life as well. So you have abundant life when you are adding this aspect of anointing oil into your life. So awesome. thank you so much. Thank you. I I want to re-listen to this again. There was so much that to absorb. So. Thank you, Tanya. You're welcome. Nancy. Hi. Um, well, I am new to essential oils and kind of randomly have done this or that. So I think I have some elementary questions and I appreciate this because um, it's not just essential oils, but it is wow oils. It's epic oil. So <laughs> it just adds so much more you know that and i'm just so stoked on the whole community thing that within this there's you know gifts that are being released so this is so exciting you know that we're venturing out and uh anyways so uh what got highlighted to me um uh, a little bit of comment but i do have some questions um with the rose oil uh you know that you said that it is um my dog i have to watch her because she does some things so <laughs> i have to catch her in the act but anyways um uh, you said it 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 has one of the highest frequencies um you know that raises your frequency is that correct is that what did i understand that correctly yes it has the frequency of 365 megahertz and your body only vibrates at 66 62 to 66 okay okay so i got that right and then um with just rose oil and maybe it's connected to biblical or whatever but what is its what is its purpose is it just to raise frequency um does it have a special thing about it so the the uh, prophetic meaning of rose oil is beauty and abundance so when you anoint you anoint in the abundance of christ john 10 10. So you walk through that veil of his abundance. So I think that's actually one of the biggest reasons why I gave her the oil, because it connects back to her abundance in healing, in her abundance in her relationship with Christ, her abundance in who he made her to be. So that's the, that's the rose of Sharon oil connected to rose. But the rock rose, which is actually the rose of Sharon, is um, to be covered. To be yes. Covered. <laughs> okay. And then um, my next question, I didn't hear you mention lavender. Uh, so is that, what, what are your thoughts about lavender? So lavender is not specifically mentioned in scripture as lavender, but lavender is connected to spikenard. It's from the same genie's family. So you can use lavender as spikenard. Um, sometimes people would just use um, spikenard and sometimes they will use lavender. So it's connected to um, extravagant worship thing. Okay. Okay. And then uh, you might have also mentioned this too, and I'll be reviewing this video so I can absorb more. Um, is there... A particular oil that's related to improving health or is it that we need to get specific of which area of health and then use that oil accordingly or both okay so there are different oils that work for specific illnesses um 
But if you're going to use it as an anointing, then it doesn't matter which oil you're going to use because it's the intention of your prayer. It's the intention of your faith. It's intention of what you want to achieve. So if you want to use it specifically for oil, uh, for healing in a certain area, then um, I would do some research onto what that um, illness is and what oil would then work specifically for it. But for anointing purposes, just grab it and set your intention and pray and release it. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Aaron. Hey. So I love that you're doing this. So amazing. I've had so many questions about anointing oil and this was just I'm like, I'm going to go back and listen to it all over again. I missed the first part. And then, um, but question for you. So it seems like what you're saying is um, our intentions are the most important thing. Is that correct? Yes. So you take the properties of the oil to maybe form your intentions, but your intentions are what cause things to shift and move in the spirit realm. Yeah. So it's almost like you use the natural properties of the oil to maybe spark your creativity as to yes. what you want your intentions to be. Yes. So yes. if you use just the oil by itself, it has some healing properties, but it's it's your intention partnering with the actual oil. Is that exactly exactly okay. we have to the, the idea with everything that the Lord's given us is a gateway. It's a portal. It's an entryway. So if you use the oil as your entryway into the realm, okay. into manifesting your intentions, and then you bring it back into this realm. So that's why Kirby specifically, okay. like okay. For those of you who are in, in mystery school, it, that's why he specifically said connected to a fragrance. Because what we're doing is, oil is tangible guys it's we can yes. taste it we can smell it we can see it so what we're doing is we're taking the spirit realm and we're somatically locking the body and the soul say it's a somatic lockdown somatic lock in with your spirit's intention so that's why it manifests in that manner because now your body is experiencing the fragrance and the smell and it's connecting it to what your spirit is busy with and you become okay. one. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. That's very like confirming. Um, and then one more question. I um, went and did like the um, oils from the, the Exodus. Mm -hmm. um, and I created like I kind of the best way that I could um, just tried to figure out like a smaller recipe for that oil that is in, I think it's Exodus 32 or something like that um but something that I noticed with it um and like it, you kind of answered it with the intention like it becomes whatever I want it to become but I noticed that it was very um fiery like yes it's like the... I had to put more um carrier oil with it because I was like all excited about making this oil and I like put it on my hands and then I just went like this. And then I was like, oh, I'm on fire. Like my whole face was on fire. And I was like, did they do this to Aaron? And they poured it all over his body. He must have like felt like he was exploding. Like I, it was like an experiential thing that I was like, nobody said anything about that. What okay. is going on right now? Okay, let me quickly, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up. Cinnamon is known as a hot oil. Cinnamon and kasha. Yeah, they literally fire. So when we use, remember I said there's like, um, like a 40 million trillion molecules in one drop, right? So if you use pure or, um, essential oils and you put it under your feet, you're going to taste it in your mouth within 20 seconds. Wow. So it moves through the body in such a quick and rapid way. If you smell it, it's going to do the same thing. So if you are going to mix your oils, right? So I mix these little bottles. I only use like one milliliter, like one to 10. So one milliliter to the 10 moles that's in here. That's enough because one drop mm -hmm. is enough. 
So that's why you were burning because you were probably mm -hmm. using like cinnamon. Try not to put clean cinnamon on your skin. It will burn you. So that's probably why. <laughs> but it is a hot oil. It's a, a, not just because of the cinnamon, because of the, the presence and the power that the Lord set it out to be. Right. He said, do this for this reason, for the. So even just creating that oil, you, you aligned yourself with that intention that the Lord said they needed to create it with. Okay. And then one more question. Can you create an oil and anoint somebody with the oil and then change the intention of that oil? Or is when you put the intention on the oil, does it change every time you anoint somebody? How does that work? Like if I pray over a bottle and I say, I want this bottle of oil to bring like physical healing um, of the mind, does that then become a bottle of oil for the mind and I should keep it that? I don't or... think you have to. I don't think you have okay. to. I think you can change the intention with it because I mean, if it was just olive oil, right? not all mm. of these other prophetic meanings of it if it was just olive oil then whatever you're going to use it for that's what your heart intention is on it okay and remember this as well guys if your if your frequency is lower the oil's frequency is going to be lower if your frequency mm. is up the oil will be affected and its frequency will be up so again it goes back to where we're at so um i had to mix some oils um a couple of weeks ago and i couldn't because i wasn't in the right place to mix them so i sorted myself out in order for me to do it because i know that whatever i'm going to create this i'm going to sell it right from from my company whatever but then if my intention wasn't correct then what am i releasing so and yes it can change you can use it for whatever purpose you there was a guy that um, just to give you guys an example, there was a guy that was under a car and he was the car fell on top of him and he was stuck. And the only thing that he could do was put his hand in the car oil. And he survived. He lived because of his intention. Wow. It's car oil. So even the that's why I'm saying all these oils to me is my story. It's my way of of uh, expressing my prayer life to God. Yeah. So that's why you can mix all kinds of oils and change it and play it up. And that's what's so lovely about this is that we can change it and play with it and experiment with it. So yes, yeah. change it. One more question. How do you but, measure frequency? There's a specific thing that they created, a machine that they created, and it has to do with light and movement and sound and so forth. So Cool. Thank you. You're oh, awesome. I can tell you this, Aaron. Now that you asked that, you guys can feel the energy. Hmm. Sometimes when I sit with my oils and I don't know which oil to take, I hover hmm. my hand over it until I feel the one that speaks to me. So feel your interesting. Okay. Okay. This is fun. I'm excited. Ah, thank you so much. That's so good. So good. Tanya, you know what? We have we have a few minutes left. Um, but I wanted to I wanted to step in and talk about um what we did at Wow Union and when you know Kirby and Fiona came out, when Kirby came out and, and anointed everybody, hence hail the theogist, right? You guys, that was a that was a moment, wasn't it? Did you feel the weight on that? I mean, yes. it was, it was amazing. So just to give you a little bit of background. So prior to, um, and just to, just to, just so that you understand how strategic he, he is with all of this, there was um, a couple of nights before strategically at, you know, 11 PM in the conference room and going through, you know, a process to prepare the environment for the, um, for, for the ordination. And so there were things that he had us, you know, go through and he had us do. And then to find your place 
there was a point in the process to find your place in a room. And so it, for those of you guys that were there, um, okay, so then when we were going through it with everybody else, you know, we we had to go find our place in the room. And mine was on the stage up under that yellow light. And it was a little bit awkward for me because I'm like, fabulous. I get to go on the stage under the yellow light, <laughs> you know, but you know, my, my first feeling was, oh God, I got to go on the stage, you know, but I, I was obedient. I did what I did, but the beauty of it for me then was to, um, to be able to watch everybody go through, you know, to go through the line. And I mean, I, the energy in that room, you guys was like none other. I've never felt anything like that before. So Every time he would dip his hand in, lay it on and hence hail the theogist. And then after a while, everybody started saying it. Okay. So going back to before we even came into the room, you know, he, um, yeah, he, he combined the oil and the wine that, and he was extremely intentional. I mean, he was set apart from all of us in the lodge. I mean, he had set himself apart and he, there was like, it was like crickets in the room and, you know, Sri Lankans are partiers, right? <laughs> and there was total crickets in the room. And so, so anyway, I just want to, you know, share how intentional he was with combining the oil and the wine together. Um, and it was, and, and the oil that he, I sent him a message. I'm like, Kirby, remind me. And he said, it's carbon 60. And he said the bottle, what the bottle that he used to pour into the different glasses, that bottle of oil was like $800. Yep. I actually saw the bottle lying on, it was actually lying by my table with the other anointing oils. And I picked it up and I could still feel the vibration of the bottle. As the oil in there. Hence hail the theogist. Yes. It the the intention of what we do with the oil is so so powerful. The, we, I can't get I can't say that more than what I'm already saying because it absolutely has to do with where we are at when we use the oil. I mean with even with that that you're talking about Rose I was standing at the back, like I was almost halfway at the back of the line. And every time he would anoint someone, I would feel it. Like I would feel the intensity of it. So that's even before I got to the front, I was already in the door because I made, I've set my own intention on that oil that he was anointing through. So I was experiencing it way back in the line because I focused on what was busy happening and it was a release. And that's why if we if we really connect with this, you'll experience portals and gates and yeah. breakthroughs and stuff like you've never experienced before. Yeah. Can you guys feel the weight? Can you feel the weight even right now? Yes. I mean, when we talk about it again, it was like, you guys, it was like phenomenal. I mean, I can't, it's, it's a little tough sometimes to like maintain your composure and going through that. And, you know, Tanya, you and I talked about this, but when we, when we think about how we were anointed, hence held the theogist, you know, the, and, and the scripture in Revelation six about do not touch, yes. you know, do not hurt the oil and the wine, you guys, it was a real deal. And the bread, he is yes. the word, the bread is the word. If, if we're going to like if we're going to make it, we need those three things, the word, the blood and the wine uh, and the oil to move through. That's what will yeah. stay. And that's what we become. We become the oil, the bread, the wine. My God. It's my God. Yes. It was, yeah. It was no joke. And so, and to think about the opportunity that we have to be involved in this and part of this community is just like none other. Absolutely. So, 
yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to throw that in there and just kind of give you guys, you know, just a glimpse of what happened behind the scenes before we came in. I mean, I wish everybody could have been there. Um, but it was, it was, you guys, it was flipping phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And going and going through the process that we went through two nights in a row, preparing the building, preparing the environment was like, yeah, I, it's undescribable. Yeah, never, yeah. never have I been a part of any of that before. So, okay, Tanya, was there anything else before I roll the to see who the winner is? No, I'm good. We're going to do two winners. I'm going to, um, one will have the seven spirit oil and the other one is a meditation oil. So we can draw two people. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to screen share. If I can find my deal, there we go. Okay. Do you guys see this? You see the wheel? Look at you go. You're so cool. Okay, here we go. Well, it's on Cheryl right now, but that's because I tested it and it landed. <laughs> but here we go. Oh. Okay. There's your first winner. Congratulations, Chantal. Yeah. All right. So you want me to do it again? Cause you've got, you have two, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Rahel. Cool. There we go. There's your winner. Congratulations guys. Congratulations you guys. Okay, so I'm going to ask the guys that won, if you guys would catch me on uh, Messenger, Facebook Messenger, and just send me your address, and then I can forward these to you guys. Good deal. Thank you guys for joining me today. Yeah, so good to see you guys again. And happy Thanksgiving for those of you guys that celebrate. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Yes.